Hi guys, a very welcome to Mentor, yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're all doing fantastic out there. So today I'm going to continue my pilot licenses series with ATPL, which stands for Air Transport Pilot License. And Air Transport Pilot License is kind of the top of licenses. It's the highest license that you can have as a pilot. And um, it builds on all the previous licenses that you've already um, taken before that and which I've already discussed in the series so far. Uh, the way I'm going to do this guys is I am going to talk just quickly about what you can do with an ATPL, what makes it slightly different from a CPL and then I'm going to outline a um, couple of differences between uh, the EASA, the European ATPL and the uh, FAA, the uh, ATP, which they call it in uh, in the United States, because there are some differences which are quite important to know. So, uh, like I've discussed in my previous podcast about CPL, um, in order for you to lift your ATPL, your air transport pilot license, you need to have studied the ATPL um, theory as part of your CPL package. And if you've done that, and if you've written all the 14 exams that are needed, then you will be, when you're issued with your CPL, you will be issued with a CPL with frozen ATPL theory. Now, the reason it's called that frozen is because the ATPL exams that you have written in that case will be frozen until you have the, uh, the experience needed in order to lift your ATPL, okay? Um, Air Transport Pilot License is, like I mentioned in the beginning, the highest uh, type of license that you can have as a pilot. Uh, it will enable you to fly as a commander in um, commercial aviation with aircrafts that are heavier than 5,700 kilograms, which is 12,500 pounds, and with nine passenger seats or more. Okay. So if you have a CPL, a commercial pilot license, you'll be able to fly as a first officer, at least in Europe and uh, all the rest of the world, except for the UK, uh, sorry, for the US. But you will not be able to fly as a commander, as a captain. Okay, in order for you to be a captain, you need to have an ATPL. Now, you are going to have to work in an airline as a first officer for uh, until you reach at least 1,500 hours of total time, and out of those 1,500 hours, 500 hours should be in multi-pilot aircraft. So those are some of the requirements that are needed. So you need your frozen ATPL, you need 1,500 hours of total time, of which 500 hours should be in um, multi-pilot aircraft. If you've reached that, then you are going to be able to unfreeze your um, ATPL. And that is done by a skill test. Most of the airlines, you'll be able to tell the airline and the aviation authorities that you want to unfreeze your ATPL, and as part of your recurrent training, your um, uh, LPC, you will be able to, instead of doing an LPC, do a skill test instead, and in that way, unfreeze your ATPL. Okay. Once that's done, all the papers are sent in, and of course you've been successful, then you will have a brand new spanking ATPL for you. Okay. Does this mean that you're automatically a captain? No, it does not. So there's a difference here. The ATPL is only giving you the right to be uh, flying as a captain. It does not actually give you command. In order for you to be, com to be a commander, you are going to have to be selected by the airline that you're working for or the company that you're working for. You'll have to do some additional training which the airline has stipulated. And then once you have done that training and you've done the tests that the airline requires, then you might get command. So command is something that's given to you by the airline. But in order for the airline to actually give it to you, you need the air transport pilot license. Make sense? Good. So um, there are some differences, like I mentioned before. So since the US have uh, introduced rules regarding um, who can fly an airline or not. Um, they basically went in a couple of years back and said, all right, in order for you to, to even start flying in airline operations, you need to have an ATPL, which means you need to have 1500 hours. And 
500 hours of multi uh, pilot time, which is extremely hard to get. Okay, that's created a barrier which is very very high for people to actually start getting into the airline business. So what happens when you introduce rules like this uh, is that after a while the authorities will recognize that mm, this might be a little bit too tough. Let's make some exemptions. And that's what happened. So there are a couple of exceptions for this. You can get in the US something called a um, ATP uh, restricted, okay, which will enable you to fly in airline operations as second in command, as a first officer. Um, that is, you have, for example, if you've been flying in the military in the US, then you can be, instead of 23 years old, which is the rule to be um, to get your ATPL in the US, otherwise you can lower that limit to 21 years old instead. And instead of 1500 hours, you can unlock it with only 750 hours. So this is only if you've been a military pilot. But then, and it's something which uh, they have introduced, which a lot of you guys have been asking me about, which is what if I do my, um, if I get my four year degree in one of these aviation colleges that exists, like Embry Riddle, for example? Well, as far as I can see, now you guys can correct me if, if I've misunderstood this, but there are some benefits to do um, your degree in one of these part 141 universities. Um, there are a few of them, I'm going to read them off here. Um, Eastern Kentucky University, Le Tourneau University, Central Washington University of Florida Institute of Technology, Westminster College, Embry-Riddle, um, and uh, Arizona State University and the University of Central Missouri. These universities have a 141, uh, so part of an FAA Part 141 license. And if you have done your degree with these ones, you can lower the amount of hours that you need in order to lift your uh, restricted ATP to 1000 hours instead of 1500 hours. And you can also lower the age limit from 23 to 21. So once again, this is me having looked this up. So before you actually embark on one of these universities, make sure that you talk to the university uh, before and verify that this is actually the case. But if it is the case, it reduces the amount of hours that you need in order to get an airline job significantly in the US. So it might be a good idea to do that. Um, that is essentially it when it comes to um, to ATPL, guys. As always, if you have more questions on this subject or if you want me to elaborate more, then send in a question below and I'll try to do my best to answer it for you. Um, as always, if you like this, then please feel free to share it with your friends on Facebook, Instagram, on Twitter or Tumblr or whatever you feel like. Or, or Indeed, if you know any of the aviation forums that you frequently visit and you think that they would actually like the content, then feel free to share it there as well. For now, I hope you're all having a fantastic day and I'll see you next time. <laughs>